What is up guys? Welcome to another video. I hope you guys are all doing good. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the stabbings which are occurring in the UK lately. Um, the situation is getting out of hand. Yemi Hughes lost her son Andre in 2016. He was just 19 when he was stabbed to death in Croydon, South London. It just turned your whole life upside down. You know, for me, I dropped my son off. He was smiley and happy, healthy. Um, and within 20 minutes, I was getting a phone call to say that he was dying. It takes a real lot to, of energy to kind of get your life back on some kind of track, which it never will be the same. You can draw some parallels between the UK and Sweden because here it's, it's gun violence and it's gangs which are taking over. Sweden is planning to bring forward measures to curb gang crime that's risen to unprecedented levels. A new report shows young people in particular being drawn into a cycle of violence. Teenagers shot dead in the woods. Gang warfare has reached such dangerous levels in Sweden, the government has called on the army for help. But increasingly, children aren't just the victims, they're also the perpetrators. Gang members I met say even they are appalled. When you're 10 years old, you can earn 10,000 euros in one month. 11, 12-year-old kids kill each other. People pay 100,000 for one murder, and it's a kid that does it. So yesterday I get a phone call from my youngest daughter, and she says, Dad, I'm feeling really upset, really disturbed. I said, what's the matter? She said, I've seen this video on TikTok, and it's just like done my head in. And I said, well, send it to me. Let's have a look. So let's have a little look at the video that upset her so much. So they saw him walking alone. Uh, we live in a very small village, so this is not a, a major city. Um, it was in the middle of the day as well, and they saw him walking alone across the field, and they all turned on their telephones to video it um, on social media, live on social media. Um, they live streamed this, it? Yes. These, this group charged my son. He was alone, defenceless. Um... They charged him. There was a group of about nine of them. Oh. Um, and as soon as he saw them coming, he just froze. They were all hooded, mm. um, had masks on, and he just fell to the ground in fear. Um, makes me really emotional oh, still God, talking Sandy, about I it. I can't imagine. How old he is your son at this point? He was a teenager. He was 15. He was 15. And he was walking across a field to go and meet a girl. Um, so it was, yeah, it was uh, just just awful um so yeah so this group charged him um on the video you see him fall to the floor um just in in fear pure fear um they all circle around him and they all start kicking him um and then this small boy um just you just see him on the corner of the screen run in and something happens you can't see it very clearly on the video um, I've had to watch this. The police showed it to me, and it was it was just the most horrific thing I've ever seen in my life. Um, and you see this small boy kind of come in from the side of the screen, run in, and then everybody disperses really quickly. It's the bizarre thing to watch. And my son's still on the floor in the fetal position, and you see the wobbling of all the cameras as everyone's running away. They didn't know if my son was alive or dead at that point. And they just videoed it and put it all over the internet. The perpetrator was identified because he was the smallest of the group. So from the video, he was able to be identified who he was. Um, he was he admitted to the attack of stabbing my son. Um, and he was uh, asked to write a letter of apology. That was his punishment. Not really. I swear, the court ordered him to write a letter of apology and there was a £50 fine attributed to the case. That was the justice that my son got. I do, I, honestly, something is going very, very badly wrong. Very, very badly wrong in this country if a 15-year-old boy can be stabbed in the head, left for dead, bleeding at the side of the road, and a letter of apology and a £50 fine is considered it. That, honestly, that is one of the most astonishing calls I've ever taken and, frankly, has left me utterly speechless. It's a very complex argument because we're talking about kids here. And, you know, when I was a teenager, I did a lot of stupid shit. 
So you can't really hold teenagers accountable because your your brain is not fully developed yet. You just do not know what you're doing. So from that perspective, I can look at this situation and just say like, it's kids being kids, right? As a child, you're, you're just a moron. You don't know better. But then if you look at it from a different perspective where let's say that this was my son or maybe even my daughter, sister, whatever, somebody close to me, this happened to, I would have to think a little bit bigger. And I think it's the parents that have to step in. It's the law that has to step in. But the fact that he got what? 50 quid that he had to pay and an apology. That is embarrassing. The same thing is happening here in Sweden as well. Kids are going around, they're getting illegal guns and they are just shooting people. This has been happening a lot in Sweden lately. And we also have our problems here where we're trying to figure out, do we punish the kids or don't we punish the kids? I think it's a very, very difficult discussion. You guys should probably leave it in the comment section. Where do you even start? Where do you even start? A 15-year-old boy set upon by a gang of youths in a park for no other reason. They wanted to live stream an attempted murder um, by the sounds of it. Mm. I think the boy survived, but my daughter was so distressed and I thought, you know what? I've got to find this woman. I've got to hear her story because I've spoken to you guys so many times in the past about the criminal justice system in this country and how it values us, how it treats us, and the fact that it won't enable us to defend ourselves when they just don't give a shit about any of us. Outside Parliament today, a disturbing depiction of the human cost of knife crime. Each bundle of clothes represents a life lost to a blade on Britain's streets, 247 in the year to June. It's part of a campaign to end knife crime led by Hollywood star Idris Elba, who says the challenge is to tackle the misconceptions. The misconceptions are really broad, from the fact that, you know, that it's some underground belly, you, you get these knives. No, you know, if you're old enough, you can buy one from your phone and it can get delivered to you by the postal service. We're talking about bone, tissue, nerve damage. Parents gained a big following on social media where teens eager to get rid of their weapons, no questions asked, seek help. Man's got something I don't want, you get me? A 17-year-old boy's reached out on Instagram, wanting to hand over a blade. Farron operates in a legal grey zone, not condoned by the police, nor actively discouraged. He knows more than most about what knives can do. So I was stabbed on two different occasions, nine times each occasion. So to me, um, how can I say, knife crime is personal. We meet the 17-year-old who's noticeably relieved to be handing over his knife to someone he feels he can trust. Your brother, give me that, yeah? My brother, listen, I'm going to take care of this. It's going to get disposed of properly. It makes my blood boil. So I decided to try and find this family. I decided to try and Google this crime. And I typed in 15-year-old boy stabbed in a park, etc., etc. I tried all the different terms, teenagers stabbed in park, etc., and I couldn't find it. And you know why I couldn't find it? Because there are hundreds of them. Go and look for yourselves. There's a game going on on the streets of London, right? The whole carrying knives thing is a game. Because I'll be honest with you, do you think majority of people that have stabbed somebody and he died wanted to kill him? Is that what you think? I know a lot of people, not proud of it, but I know a lot of people who unfortunately are spending a long time out of their life in prison. A long time out of their life in prison. And I speak to them. They ain't proud of it. If they could bring the person back to life now, they would. And that's the facts of it. And that's majority. You go to anyone that's in prison doing a life sentence and say, if you can bring it back to life, would you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go to anyone and ask. Teenager stabbed. Teenager stabbed in park. Take your pick. London, oh. Birmingham, Newcastle, Plymouth, Bristol. You name it. It's happening every 
day of the week, it seems, right across the country. What has happened to this country, our police and our criminal justice system, when people feel they can go around doing this stuff to their fellow human beings without seemingly any recourse? In this case, a £50 fine and a letter of apology. Why didn't the judge just stick another knife into that poor boy's mother? It's not an underground scenario. It's not just a black issue. It's not just a London issue. It's a nationwide issue and it's growing. All right, so this is the big one right here. This is a machete. The actors calling for an immediate ban on machetes and so-called zombie knives, deadly weapons that often glamorize violence, but rip families apart. If you have any uh, issues on the street, how do you sort it out? Dip him. Huh? Dip him in his chest. You dip him in his chest, yeah. which means like stab him in his chest. Have you ever done that before? Mm -hmm. But you know what to do if you have to. Do. Yeah. Is this the same with your friends? You know, they all, you all kind of all know what to do if it happens. Mm -hmm. Yemi Hughes lost her son Andre in 2016. He was just 19 when he was stabbed to death in Croydon, South London. It just turned your whole life upside down. You know, for me, I dropped my son off. He was smiling, happy, healthy. Um, and within 20 minutes, I was getting a phone call to say that he was dying. It takes a real lot to, of energy to kind of get your life back on some kind of track, which it never will be the same. Honestly, I'm just almost lost for words. Make of it what you will. Tell me what you think. Am I right? Am I wrong? Have we completely and utterly lost the goddamn plot in this country? Have we gone mad? Are victims no longer cared for, of the, the victims no longer matter. And Labour, I read yesterday that Labour want to ban, a complete blanket ban on swords. Yes, swords. Now, I did a bit of research, I did a bit of research on this. Virtually, I could not find a single crime committed with a sword in the UK in the last year. I couldn't find one. Machetes, yes. Large knives, yes. Kitchen knives, as many as you can shake a stick at. But Labour have got this idea in their head now that banning swords would be an answer to a problem. A blanket ban. So you can say goodbye to the Edinburgh military town. You can say goodbye to the thousands of people that do historical reenactments across the country. You can say goodbye to fencing as a complete sport all on its own. The government first tried to ban zombie knives in 2016, but loopholes in the legislation have allowed sales to continue. And all the time, young lives continue to be lost. 15-year-old Eliane Andam was killed with what was believed to be a zombie knife on her way to school in September, while 16-year-old Harry Pittman was stabbed to death in London on New Year's Eve. <laughs> This boxing gym was set up to keep young people out of trouble after its founder lost her son to knife crime 10 years ago, a decade in which she says the problems got worse. A lot of things are being said that's going to be done, but they're not actually being done. And that's why it's getting worse. Unless we deal with the causes and we deal with what is needed, it will get worse and worse and worse and there's no change. And this is life. It's, it's a matter of life and death now. The government admits more needs to be done to tackle the root causes of knife crime, while campaigners hope they now have a voice that cannot be ignored. We'll stop the video there because it's a discussion about what the parents are doing, uh, how they are raising their kids. A lot of kids which do things like this, they come from broken homes. So the fathers may be distant. Leave it in the comment section what you guys think. Um, I want to have a bigger conversation about this. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.